In this episode of Authors Showcase, we visit Chicago's Irish American Heritage Center to speak with authors exhibiting at the Irish Books, Arts, and Music Celebration. Enjoy the show, and be sure to visit us online at authorsbroadcast.com to view video book trailers and learn about new books and authors. The healing powers of coffee is percolating with information about the world's favorite new health food. This personable, reader-friendly, revolutionary book includes interviews with medical doctors, researchers, and coffee roasters who reveal the amazing healing powers of the delicious brew served up with a lively jolt of past and present coffee culture. The path to better health and well-being is right under your nose. Whether you prefer regular decaf or flavored coffees, recent studies have shown that coffee's magical beans can reduce your risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, as well as help you slim down and shape up. Wake up and smell the coffee, then serve yourself a steaming cup of comfort filled with more antioxidants than tea or cocoa and even more than renowned antioxidant-rich blueberries or oranges. In The Healing Powers of Coffee, you'll find the author's exclusive, eye-opening, warm and witty real-life stories, more than 50 home cures that fight brain fog, fatigue, headache, jet lag, low libido, moodiness, muscle pain, and stress. Plus, beauty and anti-aging treatments and eco-friendly household uses. Find out why this ancient elixir has gone from vice to virtue and how to incorporate coffee in Mediterranean-style healthful recipes like cappuccino biscotti, coffee chili, java-style stuffed bell peppers, plus do-it-yourself espresso drinks. Brew a pot of your favorite blend, nature's surprising superfood, and enjoy reading The Healing Powers of Coffee. Available now at your favorite bookseller. I'm Mary Beth Sammons and this is Monica Doherty and we're the authors of the Irish American Heritage Center's um, history book and the book happened kind of serendipitously. Um, we both were volunteers here and my parents used to come here many many years ago and I signed up to help with the 35th anniversary and to put together a CD of pictures from the 35th anniversary and at the same time Monica was putting together a video of the center so we collaborated and we found out that the pictures were all in boxes, shoe boxes, literally upstairs in the archives. And we came every week for a whole summer going through these boxes of these beautiful pictures of people and realized there was a great story here of these immigrants who came off the boat. They were all um, carpenters, electricians, and they had a dream to open a heritage center to pass it on for their relatives. And then they donated their time. Once a week they would come here and they'd renovate this building and then the women would come with them. And so we thought it would be a good idea to put it together in some kind of a tribute book. And so Monica can tell you a little bit more of the process of what we did. Well, we kind of split the tasks down, and we would have meetings and um, uh, collaborated a bit. Mary Beth, uh, being a more prolific writer, did a bit more of the writing. Um, I handled a lot of the pictures and the captions. And then um, that's how we put our time together. And uh, yeah. 
It's a, the thing that's neat about this book is that the story is so powerful of these immigrants that really had nothing when they came here and they all got together somehow, a lot of them on the west side of Chicago, and they just had this dream of passing on their heritage. And to think that they would come, I mean, it's the ultimate volunteer story that for 25 years they've met every Saturday and then they would come and they still meet and they, they would come after work on Tuesday and Thursday evenings and just put their heart and soul into this building with no one pushing them, with no one paying them, you know. And then they took pieces of the culture throughout Chicago because they were scrimping and saving to to try to put this building together. So some, um, I think the floor in the main bar, the Fifth Province, came from Piper's Alley, and they found a furnace from O'Hare Airport. So they just called on the generosity of other people to create this. And it, and so there's just a great story of people really pouring their hearts and soul and passing something on for another generation. I mean, some of it might be good. It's, uh, again, the book is The Story of the Irish American Heritage Center. It's available here at the center. You can get it also on Amazon.com. Uh, you can go directly to Arcadia. And it is in some area bookstores. Hi, I'm Connor Canine, author of uh, two books here at the Irish American Heritage Center, uh, For the Love of Being Irish and also Why Ireland Never Invaded America. Uh, For the Love of Being Irish is an A to Z of Ireland, so I take each letter of the alphabet, uh, do a limerick related to Irish history or Irish characters, and then a little bit of history. So for instance, for the letter J, uh, J is for James Joyce. And uh, what I do is that uh, we've got an illustration of James Joyce, and then I do a, a limerick around uh, James Joyce. And uh, the limerick uh, reads for Joyce, He's Ireland's finest voice, is Dublin's most famous James Joyce. Humour, pain and profanity, in his work you can guarantee, James Joyce, the critics Rolls Royce. And we then do a limerick for most other uh, letters in the alphabet. Um, Ireland has, has had a lot of uh, tragedy, uh, poignant history as well, so F is for famine, I do not do a limerick for that one. I do not do a limerick for I, which is Irish independence, or T for the Titanic. But uh, another example of a limerick would be D is for Dublin. And uh, I, what I say here is, its capital city is Dublin, where nothing is ever too troubling, where the beer isn't green, but it's great to be seen, and the people in Dublin are bubbling. And uh, then we've got an illustration of the Dubliners, the famous Irish Dubliners, uh, who are um, Ronnie Drew and uh, Luke Kelly, for instance. And then we do a little bit of history around the particular characters. So this is a book uh, that's suitable for all ages, uh, an excellent coffee table uh, book as well. And uh, people are buying it as gifts uh, for their kids, grandkids, for their grandparents, brothers, sisters. And the great thing about the Irish is they have so many f siblings in their family that they can buy six, seven and eight books at a time for the love of being Irish. And then the other book I've got is Why Ireland Never Invaded America. And this is actually a business book, believe it or not where I have created an Irish business guru who lives in Ireland, and the Irish business guru seems to know everything about Harley-Davidson, McDonald's, and Starbucks. And the Irish business guru has the interesting Irish name of Finbar Kozlowski. So it's a business story with good business lessons about branding, marketing, consumer insight, understanding your marketplace, etc. And I tell it via Fimber Kozlowski, the Irish business guru, and his US relation, Jake Boyd, who's visiting Ireland for seven days. And in why Ireland never invaded America, they swap business lessons over the seven day period. Hi, I'm Brendan Sullivan. I am the co-author of The Living Wills, which is a novel based in Chicago. It's a contemporary commercial fiction piece, and it's about how everything is connected. And one man did one very brave thing over 30 years ago. It took two seconds, and it has had ripple effects that are still affecting him and the people around him 30 years later. And now his time is winding down, and he needs to make amends before it's too late. Uh, the book is designed with three stories that, at the beginning, seem disconnected from each other, but as 
as the plot moves on, they start to interweave, and by the end of the novel, it's one story with all of those characters involved in it. Um, you'll recognize, if you're from Chicago, you'll recognize a lot of locations in Beverly, Lakeview. Find the book on Amazon and those online versions as a, as a Kindle. You can also go online and search for it. It's called The Living Wills. And my name is Brendan Sullivan. You can Google that in and find the book. And you can find it in those sorts of ways. Hi, I'm John Lenihan. I'm the author of City Life, Coming of Age in Chicago. And uh, the reason I wrote the book is I've always been a big reader of Chicago fiction, uh, a fan of Saul Bellow, Nelson Algren. I've read most of James Farrell, the author of uh, Studs Lanigan, and I saw a lot of similarities between these writers and uh, my growing up on the south side of Chicago. I grew up in the 60s and 70s in uh, West Inglewood neighborhood, just as it was beginning to change. And uh, basically the south side, in a little bit over a 10 year period, changed from white uh, European to African American, which is during my childhood. And you know, the book pretty much deals with growing up in that environment, the unfortunate racism, the violence, riots, um, corruption that the city is known for. Uh, when I was 16, I bought a car and became an Annie Frank usher. And I was working downtown, and I met a lot of different interesting people: uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, Elvis, uh, Paul McCartney, uh, Billie Jean King, different types of people. So the nice thing about the job was it gave me access to basically the, the entire city, and I got to meet a lot of great people. Mayor Bolandic, uh, when he was first uh, became mayor after Mayor Daley died. Uh, so it was a great coming of age for me, and I thought this would be a, a good story. It's a traditional Chicago story about growing up in the city. My name is Mary Canick, and I wrote a book about my family. My mom died almost 19 years ago, and I wanted to tell my kids the story of my mom. So I started researching, and I got back to 1855 in Roscommon, Ireland. My, um, my grandpa's farm is still in the family. So it goes back to 1855 and then it talks about the emigration of both my grandpa from Roscommon and my grandma from Galway on separate boats and how they met in Chicago to Irish dance. And then they raised eight kids on the west side of Chicago, which um, my parents used to call the old neighborhood. And whenever um, we were with the people from the old neighborhood, it was like family. And um, then the book goes on to talk about my grandparents raising her kids and the funny stories with her and then um, my parents' courtship and all these stories that my kids never knew. And then I grew up in Wheaton and there's eight chapters about Wheaton um, in the 60s and 70s and when you could play outside until the street lights came on and you were kicked out of your house at nine in the morning, you had to go find your mom because she was having coffee with somebody at noon and every neighbor was a friend and you could go in there and go to the bathroom or get a band-aid or if you did something wrong you heard about it at dinner time because the neighbor called your mom. And then the book goes on to talk about um, my husband and, and our children and our family and the main premise of the book is staying connected. Um, I think I'm happier in my life when I'm connected to my family. The name of the book is Ripples of Connections and it's available if you send me an email at marytk at aol.com soon to be online and there is a book in the library here at the Irish American Heritage Center. Maximum Fitness, Minimum Risk. New and Revised is a simple how-to wellness guide for folks with heart disease, diabetes, or COPD. If you want to successfully manage your illness, if you want to be in charge of your life, this book is for you. Maximum Fitness, Minimum Risk is a user-friendly, fun guide that shows how you can reclaim you, even with chronic illness. If you have diabetes, heart disease, or COPD, you can work towards personal wellness and reach your individual optimal fitness and health potential safely. And you can have fun doing it. Maximum Fitness Minimum Risk will acquaint you with a safe, medically managed wellness exercise program that accommodates your health issues. 
This user-friendly, step-by-step book is an invitation for you to begin a wellness adventure. Maximum Fitness, Minimum Risk is your guide to action in adversity and can be downloaded immediately as an ebook at Amazon.com. Get it now for yourself or someone you love. We are anxious to hear from our Authors Showcase viewers. Visit AuthorsBroadcast.com slash TV to leave a comment. Your feedback is important to us. We want to know what you think about the show and if there's any specific information you would like us to include. We produce a new Author Showcase episode every month, and your comments and suggestions may be used in a future episode. So visit us online at AuthorsBroadcast.com slash TV. Hello, my name is Phyllis A. Coleman, and I'm the author of a Pioneer series. Uh, the reason I'm here at the Irish uh, Heritage Festival is because my mother came from Ireland. Her family was all um, Irish people, and um, the Pioneer Stories uh, name is uh, Rose Donlan, and I named her after named the book after my mother, and she's a 17-year-old girl living in 1880. Her mother dies when she's 12, and her father sends her to a man in the Oklahoma Territory. And she lives five years in the old cabin with him and uh, sees no one and takes good care of him. And she cooks over the fireplace and washes his clothes in the creek. And uh, it's just a genuine pioneer series uh, doing the best that she could with what she had to do with. And the story, there's eight books in the series, and uh, each one is about her and her life. And um, and what happens to her? Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Lewis. I'm a chef here, and I teach at Washburn Culinary Institute in Chicago. I'm a fifth generation Chicagoan. My family originates from Ireland, and the stories that I have in my book are immigration traditions that have been brought to the Midwest. And it features oral history interviews as well as 76 recipes showcasing the different traditions and entrepreneurial spirit that is derived here in the Middle States. Part of why I'm here today is obviously for my Irish roots. My family came here during the famine, so we really only have one recipe from that particular side. But it's an important recipe because um, an Irish whiskey cake is very important in a family. And I added some cherries to the recipe to give us a Midwestern flair. Hi, my name is Sandra McCone. I'm the author of the Three Little Lasses book series. And it is about a series about my grandchildren, three little girls and one little boy, and their magical adventures at my country home. Our home is nestled in the woods, and we have all sorts of magical things there as far as trees and waters. But the neat thing is I teach the children all about the old traditions, the old celebrations, the festivals, and also about the world of the fairies. Fairies are a very important part of Irish heritage, so I decided to let them explore for themselves and see the magic that I have to share in my yard. The books start with The Secret in Nana's Garden, and then it develops. All the books are written so that the children have a chance to expand their reading skills and abilities by making each and every book a little bit larger. The first two books are in color. The third book then starts the chapter books. And the third book, which is the Ma uh, Midsummer's Magic, is three chapters. And then the fourth book, which is just now out, is called The Woods Keep Secrets, and it has six chapters to it. There's one more book that will be coming out, and it'll be the fifth book of the series. And as I said in the beginning, Nana's secret, Nana has a big secret. And throughout the whole series, she's given you little hints and little things so that the children are able to find on their own what it is that she's been keeping. And in the very last book, the secret will be revealed. The books start in the age group of about four to nine. That's the age group that I've targeted, but it's also a great book to read to a small child. And the very first book I wrote and had a song produced, it is sung by my daughter. She's got a gorgeous soprano voice, and it has a lovely Irish melody to it. And it is the song of the lasses and laddie. 
that is what started the whole series was a song. And from there, it developed into a wonderful adventure with three little girls and one little boy and one Nana who really keeps a lot of secrets and has magic under her wings. Alrighty, yeah, my name's Dennis Foley in the book The Drunkard's Son. Um, I had a complete blast writing it. Uh, don't let the title throw you off. Uh, it certainly has a few uh, rough matters in it, but there's a lot of humor in it. Um, the short of it is this. When I was a sophomore in high school at St. Lawrence, I kind of ran around with a rough pack. And as, uh, in a little mix em up in an alley one day, I got stabbed in the back and almost died. So while I was in that hospital for 10 days in intensive care, you kind of have cause to think, uh, how did I end up here? What's going on? So at that point, what I did is later in life, I wrote this story and kind of covered those stories of the youth that led up to the point to the actual stabbing itself. And it uh, becomes a story of Chicago and during the 60s and 70s and all of the different uh, you know, tumultuous issues that were there, the white flight, the race, relation, race relations. And a lot of it is me and my father trailing around and going to the taverns and having some great times, but also maybe as a young kid seeing some things that a boy of, uh, of tender years really shouldn't see or hear. And that kind of sums up where we're at with The Drunkard Son. It's uh, available at bookstores here in the Chicago area. For folks that are out in the uh, Beverly area, say that's where I'm from, Bookies at 103rd and Western carries it. Other places like 57th Street Books and uh, some of the other uh, independent bookstores in Chicago carry it. You can also pick it up online through Amazon.com, either in a print or in the electronic form. So it's, a, it's the Irish story told through one family. My name is Mary Pat Kelly. I'm the author of Galway Bay. It's historical fiction based on the life of my great-great-grandmother, Honora Keeley Kelly, who was born on the shores of Galway Bay in 1822. It tells the story of how she fell in love, had a family, and then, when the blight destroyed the potato, had to face starvation or escape to America. She brought her family to Chicago, and her grandson was Ed Kelly, who became the mayor of Chicago in 1933. So in many ways, it's the Irish-American story told through one family. Not only do we have Ireland, but also early Chicago. The Kellys came to Chicago through New Orleans, up the canal, and they landed in Bridgeport, which at that time was called Hard Scrabble because it was a hard scrabble. But they prospered until the Civil War came, and then her sons fought in the Civil War. And they found out that they were fighting against neighbors from Galway who were on the Confederate side. And that really interested me, the whole way the Irish were on both sides during our Civil War. And then the Chicago Fire, which they recovered from again. It's really a tribute to the resilience of the Irish people and how nothing stopped them. Honora used to tell her, great, her grandchildren, we wouldn't die, and that annoyed them. And it's about survival, which I think is the American story. Galway Bay is available in bookstores and on Amazon.com. And soon, all things being well, it will be a mini-series. Hi, my name's Maureen Sullivan, and I'm the co-author of the new Arcadia book, of History of Bridgeport. Uh, Bridgeport is arguably the oldest residential neighborhood in the city, and there was never a history book written about it. 
Um, I was born and raised there and I still live there and I thought it was important to get the actual history of the neighborhood out and have the neighborhood known for more than just politics and the White Sox and some other things. Um, the history of the neighborhood is very rich. It goes back to the early 1800s. The first settlement was 1809 and the arguably the uh, since we're at the Irish American Heritage Center the first Irish settlement in Chicago was in Bridgeport uh, when the canal diggers came to dig out the INM canal uh, back in the 1830s. This is my co-author, Dan Porglazelski. Hi, how are you? Very nice to meet you. Um, I was always interested in Bridgeport, but I have to say that working with people like Maureen, Maureen, she was actually featured in the Chicago Tribune, even in a Canadian documentary film about the Remova Theater, which was the theater in Bridgeport, an amazing neighborhood, almost movie palace, one could say, just a little smaller, that had and brought together the neighborhood at, during the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and someone who's trying to revive it as a cultural center. Particularly right now, very apt in Bridgeport. researching this book, one of them was we found a synagogue in Bridgeport. We had no clue that there was a synagogue there. It was at 3319 South Emerald, which was right across the street from where Richie Daly lived when he lived in Bridgeport. We also found that uh, Bridgeport was the home of the Negro Leagues. Uh, we found that the American Giants played uh, in the old Southside Park for about 35 years. And then they moved into Comiskey Park, which I I've lived there most of my life and I did not know that. Um, we also found that uh, there were, well, we didn't know how old Stearns Quarry is. Here's a picture of Stearns Quarry. Stearns Quarry was the uh, limestone quarry that all of the limestone was mined out of to line the bottom of the INM Canal. So uh, the, they lined the bottom of the INM Canal, and Stearns Quarry started in 1830, so it predates the city of Chicago. And right now, it's a beautiful nature park called the Henry C. Palmisano Nature Center, and I'm the advisory council president of that too. So, um, as Dan told you, I'm very involved in the neighborhood. So, um, you can actually get our book. We have a website, uh, www.bridgeportchicagobook.com. I will personally mail it to you if you send it. If you'd like it autographed or dedicated to someone, please let me know when you order it. Thank you very much. We are anxious to hear from our Authors Showcase viewers. Visit AuthorsBroadcast.com slash TV to leave a comment. Your feedback is important to us. We want to know what you think about the show and if there's any specific information you would like us to include. We produce a new Authors Showcase episode every month, and your comments and suggestions may be used in a future episode. So visit us online at AuthorsBroadcast.com slash TV. Today's fast-paced business environment, people want to know as quickly as possible what your website is about and how you can help solve their problems. A fast show and tell will keep visitors on your site longer and help them better understand your product or service. Reno Lovison Marketing produces website video and provides a variety of marketing-related services for growing businesses. I predict nearly every company will have at least one video or multimedia presentation on their website and we want to help make that happen. Let us show you how to use video on the web to promote your website, product or service, announce your new book, or provide training to your staff, distributors or end users. Take a look at some of our example videos and explore some of our other services. Call or email me personally today. Let me know what you're hoping to achieve and I'll show you how we can help.
About 250 miles north of Chicago, Door County is Wisconsin's premier vacation destination. DoorCountyNavigator.com will help you find the perfect place to stay, play, and dine, providing all the resources you'll need to plan your trip. Be in the know before you go. To learn more about Door County, tune in to A Peek Inside the Door, seen weekly on Chicago Cable, Channel 25.